Welcome back everyone. We are back with another new electric vehicle this week, the 2021 electric brands eBussy. <laughs> eBussy? Come on, they can't be serious with that name. I'm not even sure I feel comfortable saying that on the internet. <laughs> oh well. Inspired by companies who have built multi-billion dollar market caps on the basis of renderings of vehicles, Automotive industry veteran Electric Brands has drawn their own new vehicle to sell to the world. What's that? Oh, they're not industry veterans? They make scooters? Oh, for f**k's sake. <laughs> oh, well. The e -bussy is an upcoming van or truck or camper. Actually, I don't know what it is because Electric Brands has created a modular platform that has 10 different models built on top of it. Similar to how Rivian and other companies have developed a skateboard on which cars, trucks, and SUVs can be built, the eBussy builds upon that by also using modular body parts to create a wide variety of configurations. There are 10 different models on the eBussy platform, and each of those models is available in either a standard or off-road variant. Let's take a look at each of those 10 models and check out the differences, and then we'll go over some of the specs, pricing, and whatnot. First up is the bus model. It makes use of a rear cabin module and a trunk module and is very reminiscent of an old Volkswagen bus. It includes seating for four people and also has a solar roof and sound system. Pricing starts at around $23,000 and moves up to $26,000 for the off-road version. Next up, we have the tipper, which trades the rear cabin module and trunk module for a tipper module and platform module. There's not much info on the website about each module, but I assume that this one has a dump truck-like bed, hence the name Tipper. Pricing on this model starts at $26,000, and like all other models, the Tipper also has an off-road version, which starts at $29,000. The box truck is the next variation and uses a middle module along with a box module to create a mini box truck. I say mini because these things are actually shorter than a Honda Fit. That kind of blew my mind when I first saw that they're only like 12 feet long. The box truck starts at $21,000 and moves up to $24,000 for the off-road version. Now we have the transporter model, with a transporter module as well as a trunk module. This appears to have similar functionality to something like the Ford Transit van. It's priced at $23,000 for the standard model and $26,000 for the off-road model. Next up, we're looking at the pickup slash wagon model. It uses the rear cabin module as well as a pickup bed module. It's basically a small extended bed truck. This one is $22,000 for the standard model or $24,000 for the off-road model. A slight variation of the last model that we looked at is the standard pickup model. It trades in the rear cabin module for a larger pickup bed module. This one can be yours for the low, low price of $20,000 for the standard model or $22,000 for the off-road model. Okay, we're almost through all of the models, only a few left. Hang on though, because I've saved the best one for last. So this next one is kind of cool. It's called the Open and is a cabrio version of the pickup wagon that we saw earlier. The difference here is that the driver and rear roof both offer convertible functionality. It also appears to have a similar panel between the cabin and the bed of the truck, which seems like it would open to create a pass-through to haul larger objects. This one will run you about $27,000 for the standard version, and oddly enough, the website also quotes the same price for the off-road version, which makes me think one of those prices is probably incorrect. This next one is called the Freedom, and is a flatbed truck model. It also happens to be the cheapest model in the lineup, coming in at just $19,000. The off-road version bumps up slightly to $21,000. And finally, the best one in my opinion, the camper model. This one makes use of a couple camping modules that expand rearwards and upwards out of the vehicle. Inside of the modules, it is appointed with a fold-out couch along with some other creature comforts like a refrigerator, TV, water tank, and a sink. This really seems like a cool option for people who want to get out and camp or just enjoy van life but don't want to buy a huge RV or spend time converting a smaller vehicle. The standard camper model is priced starting at $34,000 and is also listed as the same for the off-road variant. Again, I'd have to imagine this is a mistake on their website. 
A quick note about the interior. Seating is available as a bench seat or as bucket seats. And one of the most unique features is that the eBussy platform uses a drive-by-wire system that allows the steering wheel and pedals to move to the left or right side of the vehicle or even somewhere in between. I can honestly say that I don't think I've ever seen that feature offered on another vehicle. As far as specs, all eBussy models come standard with all-wheel drive courtesy of a motor at each wheel. That's right, four motors. Take that, Cybertruck. The motors are powered by eight lithium ion batteries that provide 10 kilowatt hours of power and a range of up to 124 miles with the solar panels and energy recuperation system. There's also an upgraded battery setup with 24 batteries that provides 30 kilowatt hours for an extended range of over 497 miles. The cells for either setup are provided by Samsung SDI and Sanyo. The most unique thing about the batteries is how they're mounted within the vehicle. There are two sliding trays that store the batteries and allow them to be easily removed. Electric brands have plans to create a network of battery swapping stations, which should allow for faster refueling than traditional charging stations. The eBussy only weighs between about 1,000 and 1,300 pounds, depending on the model that you choose, which is really light, especially for an EV. However, it can still carry up to about 2,200 pounds. Because of its size, it shouldn't require much power, and that's reflected by the fact that it has 20 horsepower. Yes, 20 horsepower. However, it is very torquey, as one might expect from an electric vehicle, with an impressive 738 foot-pounds of torque. The eBussy will do 0 to 60 in... the artist formerly known as Prince? Come on! This graphics department, I tell ya. It will do 0 to 60 in... Infinite? Hmm, <laughs> that sucks. The eBussy actually maxes out at 56 miles an hour, so it never actually gets to 60 miles an hour. I will say, that's a first for one of these videos. I was totally getting ready to say 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds. Electric Brands has set a rather ambitious goal of producing 150,000 eBussies in the first five years. Rather than building their own plant, they'll be using a contract manufacturer to produce the vehicles. I think that's actually a smart move and will require far less startup costs and allow for a much quicker ramp time for production. So when can you get one? Well, before we get into that, would you mind hitting the thumbs up button below and possibly clicking the subscribe button if you've enjoyed learning a bit about the eBussy? If you share this video with five of your friends and subscribe, I promise that all your dreams will come true. Now that that's out of the way, the eBussy should be available sometime in 2021 if everything goes according to plan. And if 2020 has taught us anything, it's that things always go according to plan. Currently, you can reserve an eBussy on the Electric Brands website, and they plan to work with established dealers to display and sell the eBussy alongside more established brands like Hyundai and Opel. Electric Brands has only stated that these will be available in Germany and possibly other parts of Europe. It's still unknown whether they'll be available in the United States, which is kind of a bummer. I think they could serve a real purpose for a number of applications. So what are your thoughts on the eBussy? The modular system is obviously pretty unique, and the ease of which batteries can be swapped out is also pretty clever, although potentially presents its own set of problems as well. I know Tesla once floated the idea years ago, but nothing ever came out of it. If it was available in your country, would you consider purchasing one? If so, which variant would you choose? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, or even if you didn't, I'm going to link my electric vehicle playlist on the screen right here. So feel free to give all those videos a watch, and definitely let me know in the comments below if you have any other topics that you'd like to see covered in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you next time.